I, I'm surprised you don't know about it. it. It's all over the web. It's all over Twitter, certainly. When it first came out, just to give you an example of this, when it first came out, when this interview first came out by Tucker of this guy, Elon Musk retweeted with this is something like, this is interesting. He deleted it very quickly afterwards and then wrote some tweets in opposition to it without actually accusing it. But where's the tweet by Elon Musk saying, this was horrible by Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson should not be interviewing people like this. Indeed, this is, this is just horrific that Tucker has sunk this low. Where's that tweet by Elon Musk? And I know we're not supposed to criticize Elon Musk. He's John Galt to many of you. But that's creepy that Elon Musk will not condemn a Nazi apologist, a Nazi sympathizer, really. It's more than an apologist. He's a sympathizer at this point. Uh, where is Jordan Peterson? Where is everybody else? I'm not talking about defending Churchill and condemning Hitler. That's easy. I'm talking about where are they condemning Tucker Carlson? Where are they condemning him for doing this interview, for publishing it? Do they, are they afraid that they come across as, as um, I don't know, as leftists who actually have an opinion and condemn alternative opinions? But they do that all the time. They condemn the woke. Why can't they condemn Nazis? Is it because they want to keep their options open about being interviewed by Tucker Carlson because he has such a huge audience? Which is kind of scary, right? Tucker Carlson... This video, trying to justify the Nazis, has 20, over 25 million views. So where are these people? So uh, Victor Davis Hansen, uh, who is an historian I have a lot of respect for, uh, particularly when he does military history, and is, uh, the, what I've read by Victor Davis Hansen about World War II is really, really excellent. Uh, so uh, Victor Davis Hansen had a piece in the free press, as did now Ferguson. Um, and this is Victor Davis Hansen's opening, right? In a recent and now widely seen Tucker Carlson interview, a guest historian named Daryl Cooper casually presented a surprising number of flawed theories about World War II. I mean, this is Victor Davis Hansen writing. This is a, a, a brilliant writer. This is somebody who, who has written brilliantly about World War II and about defending Western civilization. And here he is, A, granting Daryl Cooper the title of historian, where he is nothing of the sort. And, you know, then surprising number of flawed theories. Pretty mild. To continue, uh, Victor Davis, he focused his misstatements on the respective roles of Winston Churchill's Britain, Adolf Hitler's Germany, especially in matters of treatment and fate of Russian prisoners, the Holocaust, the systemic slaughtering of Jews, strategic bombing, and the nature of Winston Churchill. <laughs> Surprising number of flawed theories. We're talking about systemic slaughtering of Jews and, and, and strategic, you know, and the Holocaust. And it's just that he just, anyway, this is Victor Davis Hanson trying to be really cool and calm and collect and I guess objective. I don't know. But then Hanson goes through and he basically rips to shred Cooper's assertions. Uh, Cooper makes this assertion about uh, you know, all those killings of, of, in 1941 of German, of, of Poles and Russians and Jews and all of that. Oh, that was a mistake, you know, that was a mistake, logistics, the 
Nazis didn't have the logistics to deal with it. They engaged, they, they started this war, and suddenly they were flooded with millions of these people in camps, and they didn't, and they didn't know what to do with them, and, and, and a lot of them died. That was Cooper's, that's literally the way Cooper presents it. And, uh, I mean, what Victor Davis Hanson does, as a good historian does, is he basically goes through and he shows that that is complete and utter nonsense. That is, he shows that during, uh, that, that Hitler had every intention. He called, Hitler literally called the 1941 attack on Russia a war of extermination. Extermination of uh, of, all, of communists, of the leaders of the communist movement, of Jews, of, uh, you know, of Bolsheviks, of Russians. It was a war of extermination. It was not an accident. It was not a mistake. It was not a challenge of logistics. Hitler have every, had every intent to kill millions of people, including millions of Jews, as part of this. Here's, here's the way Cooper presents it. They launched a war where they were completely unprepared, millions of prisoners of war, of local political prisoners and so forth, and they were going to have to handle. They went in with no plan for that, and they just threw these people into camps, and millions of people ended up dead, ended up dead, ended up, we don't know exactly why, they ended up dead, right? They, concentration camps, gas chambers, systematic slaughter of, of hundreds of thousands, millions of people, Russians, Poles, uh, 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 you know, and of course Jews, uh, in these camps, they just ended up dead. Right? You know, you have you have like letters as early as July 1941 from commandants, you know, of these makeshift camps that they're setting up for these millions of people who are surrendering, or people that they are rounding up. Why are they rounding them up? Why are they rounding up? He doesn't get into that. He doesn't want to go there, right? And they're writing back to that command in Berlin saying, quote, we can't feed these people. We don't have the food to feed these people. And one of them actually says, rather than wait for them to slowly starve this, this winter, wouldn't it be more humane to just finish them off quickly now? No mention of the fact that this war was called a war of extermination. No mention the actual orders that Hitler gave. And Victor Davis Hansen, and then now Ferguson, do an excellent job of just eviscerating this. And, you know, now Ferguson says, note that at no point in their conversation did Carlson and Cooper mention the Holocaust. The word genocide is never uttered. They talk about Jews a good deal, but not as the principal victim of Hitler's lethal racial policies. They don't exist. Victor Davis Hansen you know, it presents all the evidence of the fact that Hitler started this war, Hitler knew exactly what he was doing, and that this was a, you know, this was a, uh, uh, you know, the, these weren't accidents that happened. But where's the moral fire? Where's the condemnation of Tucker Carlson? Where Victor Davis Hanson and Al Ferguson really get, you know, uh, excited is, is uh, where this Cooper guy attacks Churchill. Uh, and Cooper, in the interview with Churchill, basically, in the interview with Edgar Carson, basically said Churchill is the chief villain of World War II. He is the number one villain of World War II. He's the bad guy. Hitler might be a villain too, but the villain of World War II is, is Churchill. Now here... It, you know, they, they, they get really, uh, they, they provide all the evidence to suggest this is completely wrong and this is not true. By the way, one of the things Cooper says about Churchill is one of the reasons uh, Churchill wanted the war, right? Um, uh, Hitler, supposedly, according to Cooper, constantly vied for peace, constantly wanted peace, and Churchill kept going, kept going. And not only kept going, but, but, but insisted on slaughtering millions of German civilians. And one of the reasons Churchill did this is because he was basically in the cop in the pocket 
of Jews, of pro-Zionist elements, Jews, in, in the West. Churchill also conspired to get the United States into the war. And again, if you want, to, if you want the analysis of why that is completely wrong historically, it is completely wrong historically, uh, Victor Davis Hanson and now Ferguson, uh, uh, Neil Ferguson, do a great job presenting that. But again, Ferguson has a little bit more anger, but almost all the anger is targeted towards Cooper. Almost none of it is towards Carlson. What Ferguson does, which I think is good, Neil Ferguson, is he does identify what is driving this, right? And what's driving this is this attitude towards the left. What's driving this is the idea that the left is anti-Western, which is true. The left is destroying the West. The left is evil. The left is bad. And therefore, anything that opposes the left, and what is the opposite of the left, if we really push the envelope about the opposite of the left, according to these guys, it really is fascism. If we push the envelope on fascism, the real opposition to the left are the Nazis. They're the real opposition to the left, after all. I mean, why did Hitler launch this war, if not to destroy the Bolsheviks, to destroy communism, to destroy the left? In order to do what? According to Carlson and Cooper, basically in order to save Western civilization from destruction. So, you remember Jordan Peterson's support for uh, Putin? And Jordan Peterson basically said, look, Putin is the real Westerner. He, he really stands with the West. It's Ukraine, which is supported by Europe and by the Democratic Party, and therefore by the left, by the global left. They are the anti-Western elements. And therefore, we must support Putin in the war because that is supporting Western civilization. And to the extent that Ukraine is successful in the war, to that extent, the enemy of the West are, are winning. The identification of Western values with authoritarians like Putin and Hitler, with regimes that are filled with hate and violence, that is the West? So we have here a, a, a great example of how we have the modern American right conflating, conflating the West with fascism, conflating the left, the, 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 the West with authoritarianism, conflating it, of course, with religion or nationalism, or both religious nationalism, in the case of Putin, religious nationalism, in the case of the Nazis, nationalism. But it was also mystical, it was also religious. Here's Tucker. Tucker says to Cooper at some point during the interview, as a follower of your work, I don't see you as hostile to the West, right? because he's promoting the Nazis after all. I see you actually as a product of the West, as in a defender, really, of the West and its values. So Cooper, who is saying Churchill is the bad guy, right? Churchill, one of the great heroes of modern Western civilization, a savior. How did uh, I mean? Uh, there's a there's a great quote here from Neil Ferguson about. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is Neil Ferguson about Churchill. I've never argued that Churchill was a saint, any more than have his greatest biographers, and I have consistently echoed A. G. P. Taylor's verdict that he was quote the savior of his country. More, Churchill was the savior of Western civilization. Had he not stiffened British resolve in the time before Hitler in his hubris declared war on the Soviet Union in the United States, 
the repulsive, blood-drenched empire that was the Third Reich might conceivably have won the war. True, Churchill made common cause with Stalin to beat Hitler. But he knew Stalin for the brutal dictator he was. And he was among the very first to see that World War II would soon be followed by Cold War I. So, but no, I mean, for Tucker, this Nazi um, apologist is Western civilization. Now, as, as uh, 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 Neil Ferguson writes, this is a new and unusual use of the term West as, syn as a synonym for Third Reich, which is the only thing Cooper has thus far seemed serious about defending. Ferguson is completely right. Where's the condemnation of Tucker? I read the whole article waiting for condemnation of Tucker. Where is it? Uh, he continues. Uh, this is again Ferguson. But as the conversation moves on, we see that this is, quote, the West, as it is understood in Moscow and Budapest these days. Well, maybe this is why we hesitate to, um, to go after Tucker, because now Ferguson might not be one of these Budapest sympathizers, Orban sympathizers, or sympathetic with Putin and Russia. But certainly many of his friends on the right are. Indeed, the entire Republican Party, the entire modern, new, MAGA, conservative movement is enamored by Viktor Orban of Budapest and is sympathetic to Putin in Moscow. So, it's clear that the West, as Tucker Carlson understands it, the West as Cooper understands it, is a fascist West. Uh, to continue with Neil Ferguson, for the Hungarians today, according to Cooper, quote, have no problem saying this is Hungary. This is a country for Hungarians. This is a Christian country. This is our country. They don't have a problem saying that. And then he goes on, Comparing that to modern London, for example, Carl, Tucker Carlson says, quote, it's totally, this is about London, it's totally degraded. I try not to go there because it's so depressing. It's just so sad. It's so broken. It's not the country of victors. It's a defeated, completely defeated country that's subsequently been invaded. If Churchill is a hero, how come there are British girls begging for drugs on the streets of London? God, let that sink in. And London is not majority English anymore. Like what? Cooper says, well, the people who formulated the version of history that considers Churchill a hero, they like London the way it is now. Now, it's people like Neil Ferguson and Victor Davis Hanson that have done the history that considers Churchill a hero, among hundreds, thousands of others. And yet they are so placid, so calm in condemning Tucker Carlson. Uh, here's Dava Cooper about the post-World War II, what happened. He says, quote, the post-World War II order is really defined by the fact that, you know, after Nuremberg, it really became effectively illegal in the West to be like Genuinely, genuinely right wing, like the things we call right wing, <laughs> unquote. As Ferguson writes, the only right wing parties that are illegal in Europe today are the Nazi parties. And the only people who regard the Nuremberg, Nuremberg war crime trials as sacrificial rituals, Cooper, are Nazis. So uh, there's, no, there's no question here about what Cooper represents. Cooper is an apologist for the Nazis. He's resurrecting Nazi ideology. He's resurrecting the anti-Semitic view that the Jews were behind the whole thing and that they manipulated it all. 
and you know maybe maybe you know maybe he didn't go about it the right way, but maybe Titler had the right idea about the Jews. And again, this is not coming from some fringe. I mean, Cooper maybe is fringe, but this is not coming from some fringe. Um, uh, you know, minor podcaster out there. This is coming from Tucker Carlson, who used to have, just until recently, the most popular television show in America on Fox. And today has one of the largest audiences, maybe second or third to, to Joe Rogan, in the world. Or in the U.S. at least, I don't know about the world. And he is promoting Nazism. And he's promoting Nazism as the solution to the left, as the alternative to the left. And he's still being treated as if he's just the old Tucker Carlson, just a just guy who's asking questions. He's, you know, uh, are people not going on a show because of this? I, I, I just saw he's on a tour right now. He's in Denver on a tour, and he's got guests, pretty prominent people coming to be on a show. Nobody's saying, oh, no, no, this is, he's a Nazi apologist now. We're not going on a show. Is Elon Musk thinking of not retweeting him again? I doubt it. It's like we live in a culture that refuses to make moral judgments unless it's tribal moral judgments. We hate everybody associated with that tribe. We have members in our tribe who are a little flaky, who are a little out there, who say really horrible things. And I wish they really didn't say that. But they're in our tribe, so we got to tolerate them. But there's no idea about, there's no, in our culture, there really isn't the idea of somebody advocating for evil ideas should be treated as evil and should be condemned as evil and should be shunned. Doesn't necessarily kick him off the platform, but it depends on whose platform it is and depends what your standards are. But it certainly means you don't retweet his stuff. It certainly means you don't promote his stuff. I mean, if you think about uh, why, I mean, why one should not sanction evil? Because whenever you sanction evil, you legitimize it. Whenever Elon Musk retweets a tweet by Tucker Carlson, he legitimizes Tucker Carlson. Elon Musk, justifiably, is viewed as this incredible businessman, very successful human being, rational, good guy. As you know, I don't think he always is, but that's how he's viewed in the culture. And every time he retweets Tucker Carlson, people go, well, Tucker Carlson must be okay. Victor Davis Hansen is a prominent historian. I disagree with him on a lot of stuff, his attitude towards Trump. Certainly, I disagree with him about immigration. But, you know, he's a respected historian. And I have a lot of respect for him as an historian. Him, his silence about Tucker Carlson, while condemning the historian that was on Tucker Carlson's show, is deafening. And it basically suggests, well, Tucker doesn't deserve to be criticized. Maybe Tucker's endeavor is a valid endeavor. Maybe he's just making a mistake. Maybe he's just an innocent bystander. The same with Al Ferguson. I wonder if Tucker invites Victor Davis Hansen on a show if Hansen will go. I wonder if Ferguson would go. I had Hersey Ali, who's married to Ferguson. Jordan Peterson. Will they go on Tucker's show? Will they invite Tucker on their show? Will they just treat Tucker as just a normal human being? Every time we treat somebody who holds evil ideas as just okay, we elevate those ideas. We help promote those ideas. We normalize those ideas. 
We normalize the person, we normalize the ideas. And if you care about your own life, if you are a moral person who wants to live a good life, you do not elevate ideas that are evil. You do not elevate people that are evil. You do not give them a platform. You do not sanction them because that will lead to your destruction. Your destruction. So the only attitude towards Tucker Carlson is to shun him, to turn him off, and to condemn him everywhere and at every opportunity possible. Because this is exactly what happened in Germany. Many of the intellectuals were silent about the evil that Hitler represented. Many of the intellectuals said, well, but at least he's against the communists. At least he's against the left. At least he'll bring order. There's chaos in our streets. At least he'll bring some order. And the various Nazi propagandists and activists and movements that were out there, they were all tolerated. They were all accepted. And the better people just... just went along in silence without morally condemning it. It is their silence that made the Nazis possible. And the sooner you speak up, the sooner you condemn, the sooner you shun, the sooner you make clear the evil that you're facing, the more likely it is that you will stop that evil. The more you wait, the stronger the evil gets. I mean, it's hard to believe we're even talking about this. If I told you four years ago that this is where Tucker was, you would have said, no, you're on, you're just exaggerating, you're nuts. Maybe even two years ago, maybe even one year ago, maybe even six months ago. But now, the evidence is unequivocal. So, uh, this is not, I don't think in morality this is optional. It is necessary to condemn him, and, and those of you who still want some kind of big tent coalition with these bastards, then you are bringing about the death of the West. Now, part of this, part of this is this idea that... Uh, this idea that the West is, what defines the West is anti-left. What defines the West is anti-egalitarianism. What defines the West is anti what the left represents. That's just not true. That's not what the West is. Or that what defines the West is nationalism. Or what defines the West is Christianity. Just not true. Indeed, the West is the rejection of all those things. The West is a universalist ideology. It's not a nationalist ideology. The West is a secular ideology. It is not a religious ideology. The West stands for something that is the exact opposite of what the Nazis and Orban and, and uh, Putin and all the dictatorial thugs in the world represent. They're the exact opposite. The West is fundamentally a product of the Enlightenment, of the Renaissance and the Enlightenment. The West fundamentally is the idea of reason, a reason as guiding man's mind, man's behavior, Reason as our only means of knowledge. It's the negation in that sense, or the trivialization, at least, of religion and its importance in human life. The West is also individualistic. It is about the value of the individual. It is the individual who has a mind. Collectives do not. Tribes do not. Nations do not. Every individual has a mind. Every individual is capable of reason at whatever level of integration 
an abstraction they can achieve. Every individual that has a mind is capable of observing the world, understanding it, and choosing values based on that. You're not determined by your genes. You're not determined by your race. You're not determined by your nation. You are an individual no matter where you are born. That is the enlightenment. Individualism. The sanctity of the individual. An individual's right, political right and moral right, to live his life for his own sake, for his own happiness, for his own well-being. That's the enlightenment. And the political consequence of both those ideas is the enlightenment is pro-political freedom, political liberty. In the form of the Western world as we've come to know it, where we are basically free. We have free speech. Less than what we would like, but we have free speech. We have that right. We have right to property. We have right to live our lives based on our own values, the pursuit of our own happiness. And we get to choose our leaders. We don't get them imposed on us from the top. 